Get ready to get hungry. Wow. On this Southern Weekend Road Trip, we're sampling some of the best food the South has to offer. That is outstanding. We're smoking, saucing, and stacking up barbecue in Memphis. This is so tender. And cooking up Cajun and Creole cuisine in New Orleans. Oh, y'all take a look at the front there. Are you kidding me? We'll deep fry double stuffed cookies in Myrtle Beach and dive into delicious ice cream with a taste for the silver screen in Savannah. It's a road trip filled with down-home fixins, southern staples, and mouth-watering meals. Dancing, we're having a good oh, time right. with it. So come join the adventure as we start the Southern Weekend. Welcome to the Southern Weekend. I'm Molly McKinney. Thank you so much for joining us. We love to travel across the South looking for interesting places to visit and amazing things to do. And usually that includes delicious food. So on this road trip, we're showcasing some of the tastiest and most decadent treats the South has to offer. First stop, New Orleans, Louisiana. It's one of the best food cities in the world and home to my mama's house. It's a place where family and secret recipes combine for a memorable meal. Every family has its secrets, but the folks of a mama's house of cornbread chicken and waffles in New Orleans take secret keeping to a whole new level. How did you decide on the staple items of cornbread and fried chicken? <laughs> and waffles. And waffles. Well, it's things that we love. I mean, it's, it's comfort food. Something that we always do with our chicken, we don't just salt and pepper it, we marinate it for at least 24 hours. It's a secret recipe of multiple seasonings. My husband has not given me the recipe. You know the recipe and you haven't told your wife. Nope, my lips are sealed. How long have y'all been married? 24. 24 years. So if you ever try to talk to her to get the recipe, you can't. You know, she knows nothing. And he does it in his own little room at the house. He mixes it, he bags it, he brings it to the restaurant. The secret recipe is from your family's side for yes. this fried chicken. Yes. The cornbread's from my side, and Renee knows that recipe. Let's give some credit to this side. <laughs> Y'all you have your secret recipe for the fried chicken. People love our cornbread that don't even eat cornbread. Our cornbread is illegal. So good, it should be illegal in Louisiana. I feel like it's one thing to know all the seasonings and spices that you need, but to put it all together. Well, as my mama would say, my baby, you gotta get in the kitchen <laughs> so you can see how it all comes together. So what I would like to do now is have you talk to my sister, who's the general manager and chef, and she's gonna help you to see how it's all done. Welcome to Mama's Kitchen. This is where all the magic happens and all the great food comes from. <laughs> you. Yes, from me. <laughs> it's not my recipe, so. <laughs> okay, so first we are going to do our famous fried chicken. It's so good, it's good to the bone. So he take a bunch of spices, put it together, and we marinate our chicken for 24 hours. And after we marinate it, this is the beautiful chicken that comes out. So I'm gonna let you start by um, putting the chicken in the flour first. We do not season our flour because all of the seasoning is on our chicken. You gotta get in there. Mama, okay, you cooking right, in Mama's little, Kitchen, girl. A little too delicate We have here. our music going in Mama's <laughs> Kitchen all the time, and you know, you're just putting it in. Let me get to work Let's here. Let's see how good you do, Miley. I gotta see if you can work in Mama's Kitchen. There, here you go. And one more to go. You're doing good, Miley. I'm proud all right, of you. All right. Okay, and the last step is to drop it in the oil. You just pick it up okay. and drop it in, and watch that sizzle. All right, there's the camera. Timer's there's done, the timer. Look how pretty that is. That pretty color, that's what you're looking for. <laughs> the texture was something I noticed right away when I picked it up, but when you have it this close, just the smells alone. Yes. I'm not surprised why people keep coming back. All right, we just finished plating our fried chicken, but here at Mama's, you can't serve a meal without cornbread. You have to have your cornbread, and not just any cornbread. You have to have Mama's, Mama's cornbread. Corn <laughs> so walk me through how we would assemble this. Okay, we're gonna start off with uh, three cups of cornmeal. Okay. Then you're gonna um, crack open four eggs. Okay. And remember, when we're cracking open our eggs, we're dancing, we're having a good oh, time right. with Let's it, because dance. you know the music on, you in New Orleans, Mama Kitchen. So you know, you got to have fun when you're cracking the eggs, girl. That's, like I told you, my memory of cornbread is always being the one to get to crack the eggs. <laughs> Do you think part of that atmosphere is what makes the food so good here? Totally. It's an and experience. Let, it is all about the experience, and let me tell you something about cooking. If you're cooking with love, it always comes out better. And you're just cooking, you know how you come home from work, you're tired and you don't feel like cooking. Yes. You make the food, you give it to your family, like, uh. 
But if you're cooking with love and you're having a good time, it's something about how that food just come out like so flavorful and so full of life. You know, it's like, ah, ah, look at this food. <laughs> so we're gonna add two cups of milk to that. Okay. And then we're gonna use a cup of whole fresh corn. Toss that in there. You That's can gonna see give it the off the cob. It's still. It's so still, still in there. Like I'm telling so you. Then I just mix that. Then you just mix that all together. Mix it, mix it, mix it. You should be dancing, huh? I know, girl. You gotta dance when you do the mixing of the food. Huh? It makes it easier to mix, right? Then now we are ready. Since it's my mama house of cornbread chicken and waffles, we make our cornbread look like little mini waffles. So I just scoop these and, and drop yeah. it in? Mm -hmm. Just like that? Yep. Yeah. Most people think of baking cornbread. Yeah, I think that's another thing that makes this cornbread really special and unique. All right, so then we just raise oh, that look up. At that. And you're gonna use this and you just stick the fork in it and it's done. Oh, look at that. We made that. Today. We made that today, me and you. Chicken, good to the bone, and cornbread, so good it should be. Illegal. Well, we should probably home. taste it just for quality control purposes. Wow. Told you, girl. Holy cow. Yeah, there's not going to be anything left. It's so it? good, right? You have to try it. My mom's cornbread. If she see this and you didn't try it, she's gonna be so upset with you. <laughs> Got a little butter. Oh, this is my favorite. I can eat cornbread all day. Wow, what a mild taste. That's it is delicious. So good, right? You see how the moistness oh. of it? You could eat this with everything. That's perfect. Yeah, that's mama's recipe. Mama. She is. All right, five hour cornbread. <laughs> <laughs> Still to come on our tasting tour of the South, we'll stay in Louisiana to put a Nolan's twist on a classic dish. And later, we motor into Memphis for some smoked and saucy spaghetti? All that and more when the Southern Weekend returns. Welcome back to our food tour across the South. We're here in New Orleans to learn what makes Creole and Cajun food so special. And there's no one better to teach us than the guy who wrote an encyclopedia on the subject. Chef John, you're not just known here in Louisiana, you're known internationally for this type of cuisine. What does Louisiana taste like? How do you describe <laughs> that to someone who hasn't experienced it yet? I think what sets Louisiana apart from anybody else when it comes to cooking 
is just the passion of our cuisine. We love our food so much. We love our culture so much. And how does it taste? It's an explosion of flavor that you remember your family in the taste. If you're Italian, you're gonna find yourself. If you're Spanish, you're gonna find the heat. We're in the pot. We live it every single day. Is this considered Cajun or Creole, or can you use those words interchangeably? Cajun, very simple French. Expelled from Canada, coming to Louisiana to try to put their families back together. Lived in the swamp land. Creole, they had a marriage of all the Europeans, Africans, and Indians in uh, New Orleans and through that animators created the mixtures of the Creoles. Now, I would think if you look at the two cuisines, one's very simple country, Creole is very aristocratic and European influenced. But um, I'll tell you what, I'd sit at either table. They're both pretty <laughs> doggone good. <laughs> We're gonna make a dish that's pretty common throughout the South. It's kind of like a scampi dish, but yeah. mm -hmm. here in New Orleans, y'all make it a little different. <laughs> yeah, we make it a little bit different. The world calls it uh, scampi style. We call it New Orleans barbecue shrimp. Oh now, God. what we're gonna okay. do on this barbecue shrimp and your scampi is we're gonna wait for our butter to bubble a little bit. Let's just talk about the ingredients. Okay. Uh, we have garlic here because in New Orleans we always have garlic, right? Mm -hmm. And when you hear you that start to simmer, this you can take time. your garlic and throw it right on in there, right? I'm gonna throw a little bit of this in mine and you don't have it. This is um, Andrew's oh, yeah. sausage. Smoke and spice goes into my barbecue shrimp. You with me? Okay. Okay, now you're gonna go ahead and put in your flour, okay? And you're gonna make just a little, uh, we're gonna thicken up the roux a little bit. <laughs> now here's your big shrimp. Okay. Oh, y'all take a look at the shrimp here. Are you kidding me? Look at that, yeah. huh? Okay, now you see how the shrimp is starting to curl beautifully right there? Take up, take your uh, spoon. Yeah. You can flip them over a little bit okay. to kind of get some, some. Look out! Look out! They're turning that great. beautiful pink color. Why is yours smelling so neutral and mine smells so good? Huh? huh? Well, you do have one extra. <laughs> just, but just one. Yeah. Now, what's the chair sauce? Gonna put yours okay. in like that. You, you got it. Yeah. A little shrimp stock, same as you, right there. You got it. Yeah. Okay. A little bit hot sauce, not too much unless you like it hot and spicy. Yeah. In Louisiana, we like that little kick. <laughs> a little touch of lemon juice. New Orleans barbecue shrimp, scampi over here. Now I'm using a little oregano and a little, uh, just a little rosemary in there. Okay. A pinch of salt, got that? Yeah. And a pinch of pepper. How's yours coming? I'm gonna take my, my beer, because this is barbecue shrimp and that's the main ingredient. Right there, you ready? Yeah. Are uh, you ready? Go ahead and swirl that pan around a little bit. Uh, go ahead and taste a little bit of mine. <laughs> Should I taste mine? Come on, no, don't, don't, start, don't, don't start backing up now. Just go ahead and <laughs> taste it, huh? Hmm? Wow. wow, that's the right word. Wow, okay. Now I'm gonna taste I'm gonna <laughs> taste yours. <laughs> I'm gonna taste yours. I think they're pretty doggone good, huh? Thank you. But not it's, wow. I but mean, it's not, not wow. wow. <laughs> I can't believe one ingredient made all the difference in between these two dishes. That may be the, the best takeaway for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, it just goes to show you that both dishes are spectacular. One's just New Orleans, and the only difference is that little bit of what makes us so regionally special. So, but anyway, yours is pretty good, too. Put on doing your next one, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Next on the Southern Weekend, pork ribs, smoked chicken, and spaghetti? We visit a Memphis barbecue joint which puts a Southern twist on an Italian staple. If you want to see more from any of our road trips, check out thesouthernweekend.com. You'll find videos of our adventures across the South, as well as great tips and recipes. All that and more anytime you want it at thesouthernweekend.com.
Welcome back to the Southern Weekend. When people think of Southern food, barbecue is usually one of the first things that comes to mind. So we decided to go to one of the best barbecue cities in the South, Memphis, Tennessee, home to the barbecue shop, where you can get great ribs, great chicken, and barbecue spaghetti. Memphis is known for barbecue. What is it about this city that just makes it this barbecue mecca? The unique thing about Memphis is that everyone is trying to give you something with a very hickory smoke flavor. But going into Memphis and you eat at one of the other barbecue restaurants, they all have the smoky flavor, but it doesn't taste the same. Mm. Everybody's you know, got a little different Everybody's variation. got a little bit of different. And so I'm actually glad that we're in a city where you can have you know, 15 to 20 barbecue restaurants, and you can go try different things, because it doesn't get old. What do you think differentiates you from well, everybody else in town? We're a little bit different in the sense that we've been making this sauce from scratch for over 60 years. Slightly sweet, slightly smoky, has a little bit of tang to it, but no other barbecue restaurant has the kind of sauce that we have. What is barbecue spaghetti? Barbecue spaghetti is something like you've never had. It's nothing like regular spaghetti. We take what we consider to be like a barbecue base and we smoke it in the pit for 12 hours. And we then mix it with noodles. It just looks like it has barbecue sauce and noodles mixed. But it's so much more in the flavoring and the process to get it there. And we also chop a little bit of a, a pork shoulder, sprinkle it on top with just a drop of sauce. And that is barbecue spaghetti. Like in place of Parmesan cheese, you yeah, have yeah, pork just, topping. Just, just put a little pork, just replacing different elements of the, uh, of the Italian spaghetti. <laughs> I want to try some. You want to eat some? You're a little tired of eating. I'll take a bite with you. Are these uh, pork ribs? Pork ribs, spare ribs. Do you have a preference between pork or beef? Do you only do pork here? Well, the South is about the pork, so. Okay. Why yeah. is that? It's just what we believe in. If you want beef, then you go to Texas. <laughs> even though right we have, here in Tennessee. Even though we have great <laughs> sliced beef brisket, so. But if you want beef, go to Texas. So. Gosh, this is. Fall off the, I mean, it literally falls off the bum. This is so tender. The piece I, I have is pretty good, I have to say. <laughs> You're not partial at all either. Mm -hmm. We really work to get our ribs in kind of a number one position. Our ribs are specially cut, which provides just a great level of quality. The other thing is my father worked on this glaze, and I told him, you know, we need to come up with something that sets our ribs apart, sticks to the rib, and accentuates the taste of the meat. And the dry seasoning that's on top of the glaze is something my father came up with as well. What does it feel like to be able to have contributed to the success and of this place, but it's your family's business? Barbecue shop is about families, and I'm so glad to have great food, but I'm even more glad to have a place where people feel like it's theirs. If there's one thing that goes well with barbecue, it's an ice cold beer. We recently took a weekend trip to Richmond, Virginia and visited Legend Brewing Company, Central Virginia's oldest microbrewery. We were joined by our friend Candace Smith for a behind the scenes tour. Craft breweries have gained a lot in popularity in recent years, but you guys have been around for more than 20 years. A lot of craft breweries don't make it that long. We're very proud of the fact that we're one of the oldest and largest in Central Virginia. We've been around a while and we've got some experience and it's been a fun time. What's Legend like now? We're one of the few that do have a brew pub actually attached to our brewery. We've expanded to a 200 seat deck which overlooks the skyline. We also have this nice pub restaurant that we're sitting inside right now. And we also have a beer garden out front. Now Molly, I don't know about you, but I want to taste. I think it's time. Yeah, it's time. <laughs> How we taste beer. Mm -hmm. And I believe that hop fest was originally mm. brewed for our 15th anniversary. That's correct. So it's got a nice hoppy flavor. You like that one? Five. It's my favorite. Time to get. While she delicious. was doing 8%, that's about my point. Oh. Hmm. We're at, no, there's a trend here. Yeah. There's a trend. So as we came in, that's the original pub. When you came here originally when we opened, you'd sit there, you'd look through the iron gates. 
you could see the fermenters bubbling and the brewer running around because then we just had one brewer. We were very small. Come on back. Craft beer is made out of four ingredients. Malted barley, hops, yeast, and water. Right here I've got some examples of some malted barley. The last thing we have here is the hops. Hops is an herb, and if you pick it up and take a smell. Now, if you remember the uh, one beer you had up there, the hop fest that yeah. you liked so much, <laughs> you see where that comes from? Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah like no that. two ways about that, huh? <laughs> So after all those ingredients are taken care of up in the brew house, it goes into one of these conical shaped tanks. These are fermenters. The yeast gets pitched in and then it starts to eat the sugar and it creates carbon dioxide and alcohol. So after fermentation, the beer goes to a centrifuge that sits over that way and it goes into one of these rounded bottom tanks. These are our finishing tanks. We test for color, clarity, and of course we taste it a whole bunch because that's really important. And then from there, as you can see, Adam's kegging it right up and it goes out to customers, or it can go this way to our bottling line. And we have actually two bottling lines. One does our 22 ounce specialty beers, and then all of our regular beer and our six pack comes off of this line here. That's the end of the process, pretty much. That's what we do here. Glad you guys could join us. This is really informative. I learned so much. It was <laughs> awesome. Here. Cheers. <laughs>Unless you're talking about south of the border, most people typically don't think of tacos as being a southern staple. But for a family who settled in Asheville, North Carolina by way of Mexico, it just made sense. Why open a taco shop in Asheville, North Carolina? Well, we were living in Mexico and we knew that it was time to go back to the States. We needed to find a better place to raise our girls, let them finish school. So we started researching cities all across the country. Asheville was in the top five. We knew we wanted to be living somewhere with four seasons, four distinct seasons. After uh, Mexico, after, that would make After sense. Mexico, after Texas, <laughs> um, we were looking for a place that um, that had a local food movement and that the mindsets of the people were, were alternative and, and open. And we knew wherever we were 
going, we are going to open a taco shop with the intention of spreading the good news of breakfast tacos. I love that. Sharing the good news of breakfast tacos. The world needs more breakfast tacos they do. available. <laughs> if I could eat one thing for the rest of my life, it would be a breakfast taco. Then I think you've opened the right business for yourself. <laughs> When we started designing the menu, I knew that we would have breakfast tacos. But once we had the tacos, we decided to name them. And behind every taco, there's a, a person, uh, the Granberry being my mother. There was a woman named Yolise who was the cook at our kitchen, our kids' school. And Yolise was the lunch lady. And then our number one selling taco is called the Mama's Favorite. It's the most popular. And Beth is the mama of Mama's Favorite. Bali, we're gonna make a mama's favorite today, the one selling taco here at Taco Billy. Awesome. Uh, but the first thing we're gonna do is take one of the house-made plantain tortillas. So if you just throw it down here on this side of the, okay. the grill, then you're gonna grab sweet potatoes. Okay. okay. So they can cook, I'm warm up. Trouble. Then you get a little scoop of our local sausage. With yep, it? right on top of it. Okay. And then you wanna get a handful of spinach. That goes on top. On top. Okay. And then just a kiss of non-GMO canola oil. That's perfect. So at this point, you're going to grab your spatulas. And you're going to kind of toss it all together. I'm not used to it, huh? We just want to, the goal here is to get the, the spinach sauteed. So when it starts to wilt, we'll know it's time to uh, throw the eggs on. OK. All so right. your eggs are in this quick pour to your left. Oh, so you want nice. to give it about a three second pour. So now you just want to toss it all together. OK. The goal is to have a little bit of spinach, a little bit of sausage, a little bit of sweet potato in every bite. I'd give it one more flip. Okay. And maybe chop it up a little bit so it feels and looks scrambled. So I add it and in now? And you can, yep, put it on your tortilla. Maybe both. <laughs> Under the plate. Perfect. A little goat cheese on top. So good. A side of salsa. And we're ready to serve. It looks wow. good. You did a great job. Thank you. Let's give it a try. I was nervous it was going to be too spicy. It's just the perfect thing. It is a slight hint of yeah. habanero. And... I'm going to crave this for breakfast. Every day. <laughs> I'm just going to have to move to Asheville. This is really good. Coming up next, we visit a pharmacy turned restaurant for some fried pimento cheese, moonshine jelly, and a tasty twist on shrimp and grits. And later, was double stuffed, deep fried, and totally delicious? We'll show you when the Southern Weekend continues. If you want to see more from any of our road trips, check out thesouthernweekend.com. You'll find videos of our adventures across the South, as well as great tips and recipes. All that and more, anytime you want it, at thesouthernweekend.com.
Welcome back to the Southern Weekend. We're taking a food-focused road trip across the South, and our next stop, Franklin, Tennessee. Downtown Franklin has plenty of restaurants, shopping, and music venues, but it's kept that small town charm people associate with the South, especially on Main Street. Nowhere embodies that balance of modern and old-fashioned quite like Gray's on Main. It was a pharmacy for 60 years. Everything in here is original. Mm -hmm. Everything yeah. is original. Pretty much everything in here. He handmade and wrote out the plans, built this entire building. Yeah, it was an empty shell yeah. once we demoed everything. So did you make these tables and everything? We made the tables. Uh, some tables are actually from the original floors. We resurfaced them. And but you repurposed even yeah. that one. This looks delicious. Oh, Walk me you. through what this is. Today we have three of our top sellers. We have the bacon wrapped figs, which comes out in an iron skillet. So it smells like that you're at a campfire. Our second dish is our shrimp and grits. So our shrimp and grits is something that we've been known for. We wanted to do something a little different in the south. It looks a little grits, different. <laughs> yeah, so we have collards, which is super southern on the bottom. We have a grit cake, cheddar cheese that we put on the grill. And then we have a beautiful shrimp on top with the lemon bernays sauce. And then our third dish is our pimento cheese balls. Gray's was a pharmacy. They had a counter where they sold sandwiches, so they would sell pimento cheese sandwiches. So we wanted to pay homage to what they did back in the day. So it was pimento cheese wrapped up in panko deep fried with our moonshine jelly. Are you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> I'll give you one. This food is incredible, but it's a music venue too. And you do that every night or is it just weekends? Usually Friday and Saturday. We tend to focus more on jazz, blues, R&B, folk, Americana, since we are in the music triangle. Well, I think I could eat this all day, every day, but I'd sure love to try one of those cocktails. Sounds good to me. Our bartenders are true chefs behind the bar. They are mixologists. They hand make every single thing. The Anthem Spirit is a rendition of an old-fashioned. We've changed some of the elements in it. Our base spirit that we use is the 1776 James E. Pepper Rye. We balance out the apricot brandy that goes in this, so it's not too sweet. Very refreshing, but a nice sipping cocktail. We have people that come in from all over, and this is all they want is our Anthem Spirit. Really? I mean, we will never take it off the menu. Cheers! Cheers. Cheers. Wow. Delicious. That is outstanding. Thank you all so much for having us here. We really appreciate it. Thank you. 200 miles to the east, we visited another Tennessee staple. Litton's Market and Restaurant is a Knoxville institution, serving up some of the city's best burgers and desserts since 1946. We have been here for 36 years in this location, but altogether, this is our 70th year of business. Eric Litton is the fourth generation of the Litton family to be involved in the business. My great-grandfather started a grocery store, and then my grandfather took it over, and then my father and his sister worked there, and business kind of grew, and then things kind of evolved more from deli, meat market, grocery store into a full-service restaurant and bakery. And Litton's has only grown from there. But we'll use 3,000 pounds of potatoes a week for french fries, lots of baking, five to 6,000 buns a week, depending on the week. Do you think if you had a customer that came in 70 years ago and ate here, that the food would taste pretty much the same as it did today, 70 years ago? I would ago? say definitely not. It was a lot different. <laughs> you know, it was more of a grocery store that had a counter. People were able to come up and order hamburgers. They were smaller hamburgers. They were four hamburgers for a dollar. So Our definitely portion sizes have quality increased over pricing the years. and portions have definitely changed over the years. So I'd say your portions things. have changed over the yes. years. Yes. We can't do four of those for a dollar anymore. Oh, good grief, this looks delicious. Thank Holy you, Annie. What is this one? Thank you very much. That is a Thunder Road, one of our famous burgers with pimento cheese, grilled onions, and jalapenos with fresh cut fries. And I guess we have some collard greens to go with our cheeseburger to add a little healthy touch there in our <laughs> hand breaded onion rings. 
While I was enjoying the main course, there was plenty going on in the bakery. We do all of our breads here. You know, we have all of our homemade desserts. So they get in here at 4.30 in the morning. Really, pretty much, we probably have about a 20-hour-a-day operation by the time it's opened and closed up. So that's where I headed next and met bakery manager Linda Jones. She's been at Lytton since 1982 and had me put the finishing touches on a perfect dessert pumpkin cheesecake. So we add a little whipping cream and now you need some cinnamon and sugar just okay. in case it doesn't have enough sugar. And then a few nuts. Okay. And then just in case they don't have enough sugar, you might like to have add a little uh, white chocolate ganache, which is very simple to make with whipping cream and white chocolate. That's beautiful. So uh, that's, that's that'll be one of our Thanksgiving, October through Thanksgiving and a little beyond cheesecakes that we'll serve. Wow, I'd love to try this. Well, all right then. Kind of like eating a pudding more. Mm. Mm. <laughs> oh, it's for real. <laughs> Can you come to my house? I hope you really like it. Can I take this to go? Sure. Oh man, this is really good. I'm so glad we put the white chocolate on top too. Yeah, you just give it a little bit more. I'm still going. <laughs> Sorry guys. <laughs> it's gonna be a while. Up next, our delicious food tour of the Sound hits the Carolina coast. We'll swing by Myrtle Beach to visit a classic beachfront diner that's been satisfying customers since 1937. And we'll head up the coast to Wilmington to get a drink at an Oceanside restaurant with an honorable system for buying a beer. Myrtle Beach, South Carolina looked a whole lot different back in 1937, but right here on the corner of Ocean Boulevard and 9th Avenue, one thing remains the same. Peach's Corner has been around for a long time. It was originally started by the namesake of the company. Lillian Peach Justice, uh, hence the name uh, Peach's Corner. Uh, her name, or, or what people called her around here, was Miss Peach. It was actually uh, established before the city of Myrtle Beach was incorporated. Has the food changed much over the years? It hasn't. Uh, believe it or not, the uh, foot-long hot dog is probably our staple here. We use uh, a homemade chili recipe, which is probably now pushing 70 years old. Burgers, fries, we, we try to keep it uh, the novelty items. 
uh, that you would see in, in most beach destinations. You're going to show me how to make one of my personal favorite desserts, fried Oreos. Absolutely. So what we have here is uh, it's just a, a basic pancake batter. We would like to have it a little thick so it'll stick to the Oreo. And we like to use double stuffed Oreos because who doesn't like the middle of the Oreo better no, than the cookie? Good evening, Dad. So uh, essentially, okay. all we do is okay. just submerge the Oreo. Oh, you get messy. Oh yeah, we're going to get, get messy. Okay. All right. Very careful with the grease because it is nice and hot. Okay. How hot is it? Uh, roughly 350 degrees. 20 seconds on one side, and you'll see we'll we'll flip them over so the other side can cook and uh, take them out. Dust them a little, little bit. powdered sugar dusting. Yeah, a little powdered sugar. You may want to let them cool for a second because they will be extremely hot. This is kind of torture. <laughs> <laughs> How long do we have to wait? Well, Help yourself. Are you gonna eat one with me? Sure. Cheers. 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 Yep. It's pretty Danger. good, eh? Mm -hmm. And you have to have the double stuff. I mean, you just have to have that extra, <laughs> that extra filling in the middle. You going in for another bite? Yes. Thanks for throwing me under the bus there. <laughs> Still to come on our food-filled road trip across the South, if you like donuts, we've got donuts. We'll try a secret family recipe that's had people lining up for 80 years. If you want to see more from any of our road trips, check out thesouthernweekend.com. You'll find videos of our adventures across the South, as well as great tips and recipes. All that and more, anytime you want it, at thesouthernweekend.com. Nestled along the water of Southport, North Carolina, is Yacht Basin Provision Company, or provisions as the locals like to call it, and they have an interesting approach when it comes to their customers paying the bill. This place is known for a few things, really good food, the view, 
the environment, the atmosphere here, and the honor system. So let's, let's talk about that honor system. All right, well, the way it works when you come into Provision Company is you place your order at the counter, you walk over, grab your beer or wine, we mark it on a tally sheet, you come outside, sit down, and have a good time. And the reason we do it that way is because we feel like there's not enough trust in the world anymore. And we feel like if you give people the opportunity to be honest, they're gonna be honest. And it's worked out for 23 years. I mean, we've lost a few beers here and there, but <laughs> for, I mean, for the most part, it's worked out perfectly. And like, if you want a liquor drink, you come in and you tell us you want a liquor drink, we'll make you a liquor drink. And oh, so the it. liquor is <laughs> yeah, No liquor on the honor system. How as much as we love you? everybody. How long did it take you to learn that? <laughs> About three days. The li liquor on the, no, everybody loves a drink, but damn, we love our money too. Does the honor system work because you're here in this community or is that a Southern thing? Why would it not work, you know what I mean? If you got small town Southern hospitality and you had give people a chance to be honest, why wouldn't they take that chance to be honest? What do you think that does for the overall like ambiance here? The thing that says when you come in and you see that you can grab your own beer, it's kind of like, wow, I'm at my family's house, you know, at the family dinner, going in there, grabbing beer out of the fridge and going sitting with everybody and having a good time. How long has this restaurant been in your family? 23 years it's been open. So did your parents start it? Yeah. The aspect behind this place was when we were going to open up, we were going to sell supplies and do a little bit of food here and there. Well, obviously the food took off. So the next thing you know, we noticed we were getting busier, 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 and then boom, all of a sudden, 23 years later, here we are rocking it out. This whole area is just people. It's a sea of people. I mean, it's- Unintended. It is a sea of people. Tell me about the food. Here. The food is what put us on the map. I mean, we've got the steamed shrimp with the Old Bay seasoning. We've got locally made crab cakes. We've got fresh fish that comes in from all the fisheries around Southport, North Carolina. We've got conch fritters. We've got the original recipe from the British Virgin Islands. Bang and cheeseburgers are all not frozen patties. They're all handmade patties. I mean, it's all just basically southern comfort food. So you have people traveling from all over the all world over, all over coming the world, here. All over Do you the have world. any good stories of anybody that's traveled? When I was in the Caribbean, the British Virgin Islands, and all of a sudden I see a group of people walking down the dock with provision company shirts on. <laughs> so I approached them and I asked them where they were from. They were from England, a town called Warwick, England. And they had traveled to Southport to eat a provision company because they had heard it was such a fabulous place that they had to go see it in the South. And when you come to south to the south in the small fishing village, this is what you expect to see. You expect to see a bunch of boats, sailboats, shrimp boats, commercial fishing boats. And the view obviously is a million dollar view. I mean, you've almost 360 degrees of the yacht basin. I just love everything about it, you know what I mean? I love the fact that you can come in here and grab a beer and not have to worry about somebody bringing you another one. You can go up and grab your own and just kind of hang out and not feel rushed like you're in a restaurant just being rushed out like cattle. If you hang out here long enough, you will see that when you come in here, you feel like your family. You're made to feel like you're part of the family. Half an hour south of Provisions is Carolina Beach. We visited a donut shop there known for doing one thing and doing it exactly right. So what different kinds of donuts can you get here? Just We just make a glazed donut, that's it. <laughs> One donut. One variation. Yeah. And, and it's just glazed. Just glazed. How old is the business? It's 77 years old now. You started working with Brit, and now you're the owner of Brit's Donuts. I only worked for him for three years when I was in high school. But then I, after I got out of the military, when I came home, he asked me, was I interested in it? And I told him, yes, sir. And in so, owning? Mm -hmm. And it's not just you and your wife, it's your whole family. It's my daughter and my granddaughter here, and uh, my other granddaughter. We're just all one big family. And, and have you changed the recipe of the donuts since the beginning? No, nothing has changed. Uh, in fact, a lot of this equipment back here is the same equipment that we used back in 1954. It's a unique place. Most people that come in here, they know what to expect. Can you walk me through the process of making a donut? It's a very simple process. We use a, a special mixture of, uh, of an ingredient that, that I make up. And, and the guys have been here. I feel like you're withholding some information the, Yeah, from they me. use a certain amount of this ingredient, and they add flour and salt, sugar, and stuff like that with it. Everything's made by hand. We don't have any machinery back there. We mix them by hand, we roll them out by hand, and we cut it with a cutter. And then we let them prove up a little bit, and we cook them, and then we glaze them, one right after the other. 
Is the glazed donut a southern staple? I think the glaze is probably a southern tradition. I really do. You don't see uh, a, a donut shop really that opens up and just sells glazed no. donuts. It's, it's a know. little bit of a rarity. A moment we've all been waiting for. Yeah. 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 You dip them in milk? Yeah. Oh, I, didn't, I didn't do that before. Oh man. What's that saying you always say? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah that old <laughs> thing is not, Yeah, it ain't broke, don't <laughs> fix it. Yeah. Are you gonna no. retire? You'll no. retire, right? No, no, I doubt well I'll ever retire. I think uh, he's scared to retire. Yeah. <laughs> You've been here 77 years. What do the next 77 years for Brits look like? <laughs> I won't be here. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope it will be the same, but more people hear about it, and I hope that me and my mom can make it just as successful as it is they today. Can, people talk about they feel like they were destined to be in that type of business, and I just feel like I was destined to be in this business. Not just any donut shop, but this donut shop. We've got one more stop on our southern food adventure. We visit Savannah, Georgia, where homemade ice cream is the biggest star on the menu. Stay with us. What do three Greek brothers, an old-fashioned soda shop, and a Hollywood film producer all have in common? We're gonna find out right here at Leopold's Ice Cream in Savannah, Georgia. Let's go in and talk to the owner. How long have you all been here? This location, 11 years. 11 years. But the company since 1919. 1919. 1919. Gosh, and how did you all get started? My dad and his older brother. They, they perfected the formulas and, and just started making really good ice cream. And we'll never change it. It's all natural, just good things. We try to source locally as much as we can. And people say, but you can buy something less expensively from A or B. I said, no, we do what we do. I love that. Yeah. Well, there's a lot to see. Let me show you around some. Sounds good. Okay. make everything here. It's all, all handmade and homemade in small batches, five gallon batches. In my dad's day, he had very few flavors, probably a third of what we have now. Over here, for instance, there's, there's Tutti Frutti, which is an old flavor from 1919. The others, we talk about it, kick around ideas and make ice cream. 
Now, there are a lot of things here that are interesting from my dad's original store. This soda fountain right here, it's the cover, is 1930. I can't imagine this was easy to move from the old location I, here. Trust me, I, I, I did it, and I'll never do it again. <laughs> The other thing that we've done here, I've got a lot of the one sheets, the posters from movies I've done. Well, that makes a lot of sense now looking around as to why there's oh, the, ice yes, cream yes. and then there's all these really incredible movie posters. I mean, you've worked on some really acclaimed pieces. Well, I've been fortunate, I really have been on films that I've, that I've done, but ice cream, this is passion, you know, it's, it's fun. Ice cream, you're predisposed to feel good about it. Why is it important to you to come back here and interact with your customer base and wash dishes? I mean, you're a big time Hollywood producer. You don't have to come back here. You have a great team. <laughs> I enjoy interacting with people. I enjoy meeting people. Yeah, I, I'm in LA a lot, but I really prefer being here. Mm. Now. Would you like to try anything today? Yes. Yes, I think we're gonna have to try a few. Okay. Go. Okay. Yeah. That's a little cold at this point, I have to say. Okay. <laughs> it's delicious. Let's do one more. Okay. I'm going to have honey almond. I'll do the same. Well, talk about living the American dream. Thank you so much for having us here today. <laughs> Thanks for coming by. Absolutely. Cheers. Let's eat it. This is my favorite. That's it for this road trip. I'm Molly McKinney. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time on The Southern Weekend. If you want to see more from any of our road trips, check out thesouthernweekend.com. You'll find videos of our adventures across the South, as well as great tips and recipes. All that and more anytime you want it at thesouthernweekend.com.